the king of the wasteland. Ah, yes, the Witcher. Now that I've played through the entire first rendition of the Witcher games, I can give an honest opinion on what I feel about the game. Uh, the first experience and feeling I got from the game is that the writing in it feels like it's been written by a 12-year-old horny virgin. I'm gonna get into that uh, a bit more later as to why and how, and I'm not gonna be shitting on the game completely. There was a few nice features, there was a few good things about the game, and I'm gonna be explaining a bit more about that. I'm gonna start off with the good things, and then I'll finish with the bad things. How does that sound? Let's kick it off, shall we? First of all, I'd like to get in on voice acting. Listen, listen, listen to this. The, this guy, this guy, this guy, right here, right here. Listen, listen. What do you want? That. I like that. His voice has sincerity, it has honesty, and it's direct, simple. Parts of the voice acting in this game are kind of hit and miss. Some of them are really, really good, while others, terrible. Just, just terrible. Uh, some of the acting just makes you feel like they actually mean what they're saying, which is very important in voice acting. This guy, this guy, the Dwarven Antiquity, I don't know what it was. This guy is selling books and such. Uh, this guy has a really good voice. It's sincere, honest, and decent. Voice acting is important in games like this, and yeah, th this, some of them are nice. That's it. Yeah. Another thing that I really like about this game is the fireplace. When you meditate in a fireplace, like so, you use it to distribute your talent points and brewing alchemy. Which kind of illustrates that in order to get stronger you need to meditate in order to distribute your talent points properly. And while I'm on the subject, I really like this talent tree. I mean, you get bronze, silver, and gold points according to your levels, and you distribute those according to how strong how strong the upgrades are. You have the steel sword and the silver sword, which needs to be upgraded in st into three sections each. The this this is a nice feature. I mean, everything has five different branches of each three. See, five different. It's intelligence, stamina, dexterity, and strength. This is a nice talent tree. The way it's set up, the way it's distributed, the boosts and power-ups you get from it, it's not overpowered, it's uh, well-balanced, and it's nice. I like this. But as I was uh, talking about the fireplace, what I really like about it is when you're meditating for a few hours, then time actually simulates passing by. Watch this. All right, this was a terrible. All right, that didn't. Uh. Let's try that again. Now there's more people. Because as I meditate for several hours, the people move faster and things are zooming around. Watch this. See the speed up, as in as if the time is passing. It's a small feature, but it's nice. I like the fireplace, I like meditating at the fireplace to brew my potions and to distribute talent points. This is a nice feature, plus points. Yes, I like it. Now another thing I want to compliment is the graphics. The graphics of the Witcher game Enhanced Edition is actually pretty good. People might argue that it doesn't look good, but this, the Enhanced Edition came out in 2008. The original Witcher was 2007, but the Enhanced Edition was 2008. For being 2008, this is actually really good quality. I mean, they put a lot of details into the character models. You can practically see the seams of his clothes. I mean, you can tell that this is a chainmail on his arm. And the graphic, in general, of the game is nice. The first episodes I recorded, I had to set the quality down because I had lagging issues, and 
other if issues with the performance of the recording and the gameplay itself, but I've, after I fixed it, I was able to set it up again, and the graphic itself is nice. 2008, I applaud you. This is good. Now let's start taking a shit of the game. There is something about the beard and the hair physics of the game that it's probably supposed to be simulating um, air blowing through it, so it waves. There, you, did you see that? Watch, watch, watch. It keeps punching. Like just punching like this. A lot of the bears of the dwarves are doing this, a lot of the hairs on the women are doing this. It's incredibly annoying and it's very shitty. It's supposed to be some sort of movement physics that's gone wrong, but that's one of the shitty parts. There's a lot of programming issues. Even though this is the enhanced edition, there's a lot of things that are wrong with it. The things are just bugging out everywhere. People are teleporting, teleporting sometimes and this beard. This is incredibly annoying if you're trying to talk to someone and their beard keeps punching you in the face. That's one thing. Another thing is the lack of character models actually. Like they seem to be just reusing the same characters over and over again. This is the same character as the cannibal in the swamp, the mute guy that I, the, the fisher king is called. And this, this character has been used all over. The old woman's being used all over, the lady with the cleavage is being used all over, the kids are being used all over. There's not many character models, and that would be fine if they were unnamed characters, like uh, city guardsmen, or poor, poor man, or poor woman, but these are usually quest givers. They're... like this guy, the gardener. That's the same guy again, the old guy that was just over there. The gardener gives you quest, he's a quest giver, he's a someone that's relevant and he looks exactly the same as so many other people see the exact same model this happens again and again and again anyone who gives you a quest or has a name needs to have a specific look they need to be a different character model and preferably they have uh, their own names too look at this poor boy he looks just the same as the other poor boys and this old woman bring trouble that's exactly the same character model as the the, the main, uh, the village elder in the swamp, which is a very important quest giver. Look at that. A co color swapped another poor old woman. Look exactly the same. And this guy, the priest, is also the same as the druids. This is really annoying, because it, it doesn't immerse you into the game. Also, this rich guy. Watch, 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 watch. This guy. This guy's being used a lot. He was very often early in the game, and you just meet him everywhere in different names, different colors, and different sh shapes and sizes. No, not different shapes and sizes, actually. It's exactly the same. The laziness. You see, these two identical boys with different colors are following me now. That's annoying. That's lazy. Step up your game. Now, the combat. The combat in this game is really, really annoying. Uh, yeah, watch this. When you stun an opponent, you can finish him off, right? Some of the special attacks to finish him off are ridiculously stupid. This one is incredibly stupid. Watch this. He takes the sharp edge of the sword and he smacks him in the face with the handle. I mean, wh what? What? Why? Why is this a thing? That's not anything anyone would do. I mean, sure, his handle has a little metal pieces sticking out of it, but his sword is sharp. He has a sharp fucking sword. That's not a special attack. At all. Anywhere. For anyone. That's not something anyone does. Not even a witcher. Not even a magical word with demons and dragons. No one would do that. Anywhere. It's stupid. Fuck off. The combat is also really laggy and annoying. I mean, sure, I should have been paying more attention when I was uh, starting up the game, but as I figured out, you can you can just watch what's going to happen right now. If I just spam the attack button uh, using the fast attack mode, I can instantly kill an opponent, pretty much. And the damage doesn't actually happen as he strikes an opponent. Watch, look at his health bar, look at his health bar. 
is disappearing. I'm not, I haven't even touched him. His sword has not touched his opponent. Watch, 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 watch. Okay, I touched him a little bit. And it's draining, it's fading, it's fading. Going away, going away, and dead. What? What is this? What is this? Why is this a thing? Fuck off. Now, why is not capable of climbing down small ledges or even jumping? I don't know. But see, those guys over there, they have bows. I never get a bow throughout the entire game. I can't defend against bows. They just shoot me. I have to run up to them while getting shot with arrows, and they just shoot me. I can't do anything. I can't shoot back. Now, if I'm going to be talking about the combat system for all of its flaws, then I'll be spending like half an hour just talking non-stop. So I want to go into the monsters. Uh, a lot of them are quite positive, actually. I have... I don't have beef with the monsters. Uh, there's the standard, you know, ghouls, uh, dog, cockatrice is a standard for many games, but they have their own, uh, like the, the blood, the blood sucker, and the drowners. They're they're like Witcher standards. But what I'm going to be going into here is that in order to get specific parts from these monsters, you you're gonna have to have read. A book about them you're gonna have to have studied them this is a positive thing that I like it's not a negative thing the fact that you have to study a monster or a plant in order to get certain parts from it that makes sense it's logical it's nice but the thing is most of the quests that you get where it, it's required to get a certain part of a monster you need to get to the book first you get the book to study about the monster, to get the parts, to give a quest item to a guy. Now, the books, they co usually cost a lot more than the reward money for the quest. And that's, that's not a motivation. I mean, of course you want to get all the books so you can study all the monsters, so you can get all the parts, so you can make better potions, but um, if the books cost more than the reward, then all you are left with is the experience points, which is also a good thing, but in early stages of the game you want money. It was a pain to grind money. And this... This was not a good thing. I like the monsters, a lot of them have their own name, like a, like a noon wraith, it's not just a wraith. I mean, a striga. A wolf is a wolf, sure, but they have their own names for things. But the fact that you have to buy the books that are ridiculously expensive in order to take on a quest that gives you less money than what the book costs, that's not a nice feature. I mean, come on. Now, I don't know what to use, an use as an example for this, you but the, most of the dialogue in this in this game doesn't make sense you usually don't feel like you're talking to an actual person uh, if you can just see like any part of any of the episodes I made in the series like when you talk to someone what you say to them don't make sense and their replies doesn't make sense it's kind of like with the quests uh, some quests they don't fit together even though they're supposed to fit together like quest lines and then you you do another quest in the meantime that completely breaks everything this is this is not this is not good programming like the voice acting is fine but the writing that's that's what's terrible it's like the writing of the characters they just don't work most of the time it's, it's very lazy, and it should have been done better, because when you talk to someone, it feels like you're talking to a robot, and that's just ridiculous. Bring trouble. Now let's talk about the sexual exploits. That's something that really bugs me, is how simple and easy it is for Gerald to get laid. Not I mean, good. I'm now at the hospital Sean is set up close to the end of the game, and there's a lot of wounded, dead, close Humans to death and deceased people lying all around. And these are the two nuns that I uh, escorted a very short distance in order to get here. Now, later when I came back, I wasn't recording this, but um, I would love to see you again. You see, she would love to see me again. The, she's saying that because kind of as I came back here, 
I had sex with both of them. Like in the middle of the floor here, with all these deceased dying people around. Two nuns with a bunch of dying people around. That doesn't... Who does that? Seriously. Humans are strange. It was genuinely in the background, a sick and dying man, while it was showing. It's not making any sense. Most of these sexual exploits doesn't make sense at all. Another one was in the cave that I found with a bunch of dwarf so no, elves. There was el elven refugees in a cave and they were starving, begging for food. I gave them food, all of them, and one of the women got upset with me because I didn't give her enough food. She got really angry at me, started cursing me out, calling me different things in elvish, and then she slept with me. It's not making sense. I mean, most of the sexual exploits in the game doesn't make sense, which is why I earlier said it's like it's been written by a horny 12-year-old virgin, because people just seem to sleep with Geralt for no reason whatsoever. Just... I don't... I don't... Uh, fuck it. I'm going to admit that the ending I liked. The ending of the game was nice. It's like all the things that you did throughout the whole game comes together at the end to either help you or hinder you. I'm not going to spoil the ending. If 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 you want to watch it, just watch the last episode or watch the last compilation episode. Uh, that's kind of a big spoiler, but I'm not going to go into it in details. But the ending is decent. It 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 wraps things up. I just don't like the final boss. Because that was kind of stupid. But how it was set up was nice. So if I'm going to be talking about everything that's wrong with this game, I'm going to be going on for like a few hours and nobody's going to want to watch that. I actually wanted to try and make this video like 5 minutes. That would be more pleasant. That's easy to watch. But it turned out a bit longer than expected. So I'm sorry about that. There's a lot more wrong with this game. I explain a lot of it in my playthrough. There's there's also a few positive things, but I just can't recommend this game to anyone. It's not in my heart to tell people to go buy this game. It's not in my heart to tell people to try this game. It's not engaging. It's not too exciting. I was playing on the hardest difficulty. I died a few times, but it wasn't it wasn't a challenge. It didn't take too long for me to get overpowered. And just conquer everything. Uh, all in all, The Witcher 1, I give it a roll on the dice, a 2. It's not a 1 at least, because it has nice features. I give it a 2. So, live with it. I'm done with this game. Um, yeah, I'm not going to be playing it again. I'm going to erase it completely. I'm really hoping Witcher 2 is better. That's that's all I have to say. If you don't if you think I'm full of bullshit, then try it out yourself. Because then fuck you, you know. So what? Just try the game if you think I'm full of bullshit or just watch how I play the game, then you understand. But I'm not going to recommend anyone to play this game. It's yeah. Save your money. Have a good night.